to talk about centenary of the Russian Revolution and what it means for modern Russia here to our news. We are joined by Andrei Zolotov, Russian journalist and editor, the country's affairs observer now based in Vienna. Who are those Russians who celebrate this date in the country today? Is there anyone who rejects it, who is ashamed of it? The, the interesting thing about this, this anniversary is that uh, it's hard to find a mainstream. It's hard to find some sort of like a main line of the national attitude. The, there is no national consensus on what the revolution actually means. Uh, I think there is an understanding that it's, it's an important event that has to be marked somehow, but whether to paint it uh, positively or negatively, etc. there is no such an official position. There is no such mainstream. And that's why there is a quite a diversity of opinion expressed. Uh, and uh, um, certainly the, the left-wing forces for the, for the communists, that's, that's a thing to celebrate. Uh, there has been a conference of uh, um, uh, left-wing parties in St. Petersburg, uh, co-organized by the Russian Communist Party. Uh, but uh, other than that, it's more of an academic slash cultural slash historical occasion. Is there common awareness in the society, actually, notably uh, the young generation, about what those events happening 100 years ago meant for the country, its people, the world, in the context of the Red Terror, for example? The answer is yes and no. Basically, I asked several of my younger friends uh, what is... What do they know about uh, the events to mark the uh, the hundredth anniversary of the of the revolution? And first, I saw bewilderment in their faces, kind of yeah, uh, really, what is? And then they started thinking about oh yes, there is such and such internet project. There are um, there is a channel on social networks that is trying to present uh, the, um, uh, the the history of 1917 as if being posted today on social networks. Um, there are such and such programs, but uh, at the same time, as far as the general awareness of what the revolution brought, I would say among the younger generation, it's very much in the background. It's not something that's being debated on a daily basis by the, by the younger people, more by the, by the older generation. How much you think uh, Bolshevik revolution heritage is felt in a typical Russian family these days, meaning like the personal story? Is there any personal story passed on in your family? There is one very interesting document in the family archive uh, that uh, my grandmother gave to me when I turned 14. Uh, my my great grandfather, who was an officer in the Russian army, um, who died in 1963, and I was born in 1968. Uh, so my great grandfather created a special folder in his uh, um, in his archive that was called Revolution in the Army, and uh, in this folder there were several certificates issued by soldiers Soviets. Um, uh, these, these newly created bodies of uh, um, the revolutionary soldiers certifying that he was quote unquote like a, a good, a trustworthy officer, someone who could be coped with. But the most interesting document was a, 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 a rough copy of a draft of a letter he was uh, uh, writing to his uh, friend uh, in November 1917. Uh, which was written in a, in a, not a shorthand, but really as you write a draft, not very legible. Um, and yet, uh, then with his old man hand on a Soviet paper, written very clearly with an understanding that it could be of interest. And this letter describes the destruction uh, that was happening in the, uh, in the old army. Uh, in, in, in November 1917, how everybody was stealing, how, how there was no discipline, how there was no way to provide um, the, the food and clothing for the, um, for the soldiers, and how the entire structure was totally, um, totally uh, dismembering. Uh, and there is one line there saying, uh, uh, we are now like the, the like doctors of a, of, of a dying patient. 
uh, everybody is expecting something from us, but we cannot provide. Um, and basically, to me, the document, why it's, it is important, not only because it is written by my great-grandfather, but the fact that uh, okay, one, of the, one of the perceptions of the revolution is that it was a catastrophe and, uh, and basically how, how wonderful, how, how beautiful the life in pre-revolutionary Russia was. And uh, one of the theories that are being circulated, one of the nationalist theories that are being circulated today, is that basically it was the work of the of the foreign agents uh, that that the Bolsheviks were an alien force, um, sort of working in. The, and yeah, Bolsheviks were probably an alien force, but the fact that the system got rotten and and disintegrating. Is, is very much the message of that letter. Actually, my family is quite an exception here because um, as when I asked around, uh, and not, not only now, in, before, since my, since my childhood, basically there are very few families that carry documents or any, any evidence of uh, what, was, um, uh, what was the case with these families uh, during and immediately after the revolution. You see, the, the big difference between Russia and other, say, Central European countries, some of the post-Soviet countries that became part of the Soviet system uh, over the course of the broadly understood World War II, uh, there were three to four generations um, that lived under the, under the uh, Soviet system uh, that went through terrible atrocities, the war, the repressions, a lot of things were not being said. A lot of documentation was being destroyed. Uh, so, for example, I I grew up with the with the with the photo albums and documents of my family dating back to the uh, late 19th century, and I knew the history of um, on maternal side of my family being divided uh, between the Red Army and the White Army. Uh, two brothers fought in one army, two brothers in the other army. So for me, for example, the history of the Civil War is very much a, a, a personal history. Uh, but that's not the case for many Russians uh, that, that I even polled uh, my, my, my Facebook friends. And a lot of answers were, well, we don't know anything about our ancestors. Uh, from the from the time of the revolution. Let's get back to modern Russia. Is uh, this date or Soviet heritage as such in any way exported by certain groups or political parties uh, in Russia or maybe the state? Uh, how the attitude towards it evolved in Russia after the collapse of the Soviet Union during the last years? I'd say that, um, I mean, as, as you know, the official holiday uh, that was this, the main Soviet holiday on, uh, uh, on November 7th, commemorating uh, the revolution, is, has, has long been gone. Uh, first, it was replaced uh, in the 1990s by the day of what was called the Day of National Reconciliation and Accord. Uh, and then, um, for the past several years, uh, with, the, um, with the Day of National Unity on November 4th. Uh, so the sort of the folk tradition of celebrating something in the beginning of November, having a day off in the beginning of November, was sort of respected, uh, and and the but the emphasis was shifted uh, from uh, from the revolution uh, to the liberation war. Uh, we can call it a liberation war of uh, 1612, 1613. Um, when the Romanov dynasty was established. And uh, that's where the day of national unity sort of comes from. Uh, it was the church holiday of Our Lady of Kazan, which received a new secular meaning. Um, is that being exploited by the state? Uh, yes, the tradition of celebrating something in early November has been turned into a uh, into a public, in, into a new kind of public holiday. As far as actually the, the day of the of the, the anniversary of the revolution, it is being ex exploited by some fringe groups, uh, by the by the the, the uh, radical opposition, 
uh, who tried to hold uh, uh, protests the past weekend under the slogan of October Revolution. But it's being exploited not only in Russia. I now live in Vienna uh, and work in Vienna. And during the uh, Vienna city elections in October uh, 2015, the uh, populist uh, uh, Freedom Party, FPÖ, uh, the elections were in October, and they tried to take over the uh, uh, long social, uh, the, 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 the uh, Vienna City Council, which has long been controlled by Social Democrats, under the slogan of October Revolution. You could see the posters October Revolutions all over Vienna uh, um, uh, two years ago. Uh, so it is, it's an important brand, I would say, October Revolution is a major brand which Various groups are trying to make use of, um, but but uh, which is hard to be uh, to accommodate it to the modern realities. I would say it's being less and less part of the of a of a of a kind of a street streetwise sort of common common narrative. Um, and of course now there is a lot of happening on television on the radio, including the themes that have never been popularly explored in the, uh, in the Soviet days. For example, uh, there are now the two major national television channels uh, have um, prepared uh, the, the, the series, uh, one on Trotsky, the other on Paros. Now I can say when I was growing up in the, in the, in, in the Soviet Union, uh, we didn't know much about Trotsky or Paros. There was just Lenin there. Even there was very little Stalin after uh, Khrushchev era destalinization. So the, the entire revolutionary discourse was in the, in the popular mind was totally uh, eclipsed by the figure of Lenin and the other figures to a certain extent. Uh, so now uh, they are, they're being serialized uh, as, a, as a history of uh, other major revolutionary figures. And any investment uh, into historical investigation of repressions, for example, anything you heard of? Um, you see, there is a major, I would say, coincidence that the centennial of the revolution is also the 80th anniversary of the Great Terror. Uh, of 1937, which was the peak of uh, Stalin era repressions. And uh, as you well know, uh, several days ago, there was an um, opening of the, uh, the, the major national monument uh, in Moscow on, uh, um, on, the, on the Ring Road. Uh, and um, uh, in the presence of the president and patriarch, and other major dignitaries. But still, the state uh, uh, didn't. Uh, the state didn't connect uh, these two events. They didn't connect the uh, anniversary uh, of uh, the revolution. and didn't connect the opening of this monument. Uh. Formally, formally not. But de facto, it has been connected by by um, by organizing it now and not at another time. Yeah. So it the. There is an indirect connection, um, but but there will be other uh, um, other events. We'll see how, for example, in in uh, December, the hundredth anniversary of the of the, the Soviet secret police, Cheka, going to be celebrated uh, because that is uh, that is the next major anniversary that's coming up. Andrei Zolotov, Russia's current affairs observer. Thank you very much.